Part 8. Goodbyes. Burlington, Vermont. Snow has begun falling. Reluctantly, the wacko turns back for the house. You ever hear of Clement Attlee? Of course not. Why should you? Man was a loser, a third-rate mediocrity, who only slipped into the history books because he unseated Winston Churchill before World War II officially ended. The war in Europe was over, and to the British people, there, there was this feeling that they'd suffered enough. But Churchill kept pushing to help the United States against Japan, saying the fight wasn't finished until it was finished everywhere. And look what happened to the old lion. That's what we didn't want to happen to our administration. That's exactly why we decided to declare victory once the continental U.S. had been secured. Everyone knew the war wasn't really over. We still had to help out our allies and clear whole parts of the world that were entirely ruled by the dead. There was still so much work to do, but since our own house was in order, we had to give people the option to go home. That's when the UN multinational force was created, and we were pleasantly surprised by how many volunteers signed up in the first week. We actually had to turn some of them away, put them on the reserve list or assign them to train all the young bucks who missed the drive across America. I know I caught a lot of flack for going UN instead of making it an all-American crusade, but to be totally honest, I really couldn't give a damn. America's a fair country. Her people expect a fair deal. And when that deal ends with the last boots on Atlantic beaches, you shake their hands, pay them off, and let anyone who wants to reclaim their private lives do so. Maybe it's made the overseas campaigns a little slower. Our allies are on their feet again, but we still have a few white zones to clear. Mountain ranges, snow line islands, and the ocean floor, and, and then there's Iceland. Iceland's going to be tough. I wish Ivan would let us help out in Siberia, but hey, Ivan's Ivan. And we still have attacks right here at home as well, every spring or every so often near a lake or beach. The numbers are declining, thank heavens, but it, it doesn't mean people should let down their guard. We're still at war, and until every trace is sponged and purged, and if need be, blasted from the surface of the earth, everybody's still got to pitch in and do their job. Be nice if that was the lesson people took from all this misery. We're all in this together, so pitch in and do your job. We stop by an old oak tree. My companion looks it up and down, taps it lightly with his cane, then, to the tree, You're doing a good job. Sand Lakes Provincial Wilderness Park, Manitoba, Canada. Jessica Hendricks loads the last of the day's catch into the sled. Fifteen bodies and a mound of dismembered parts. I try not to be angry, bitter at the unfairness of it all. I wish I could make sense of it. I once met an ex-Iranian pilot who was traveling through Canada looking for a place to settle down, he said that Americans are the only people he's ever met who just can't accept that bad things happen to good people. Maybe he's right. Last week I was listening to the radio and just happened to hear that DJ who used to be famous. He was doing his usual thing, fart jokes and insults and adolescent sexuality. And I remember thinking, this man survived and my parents didn't. No. I try not to be bitter. Chongqing, China. Kuang Jingshu does his final house call for the day. A little boy with some kind of respiratory illness. The mother fears it's another case of tuberculosis. The color returns to her face when the doctor assures her it's just a chest cold. Her tears and gratitude follow us down the dusty street. It's comforting to see children again. I mean those who were born after the war. Real children who know nothing but a world that includes the living dead. They know not to play near still water, not to go out alone or after dark in the spring or summer. They don't know to be afraid, and that is the greatest gift, the only gift we can leave to them. Sometimes I think of that old woman at Nu Da Chang, what she lived through, that seemingly unending upheaval that defined her generation. Now that's me, an old man who's seen his country torn to shreds many times over. And yet, every time we've managed to pull ourselves together to rebuild and renew our nation. And so we will again. China, 
and the world. I don't really believe in an afterlife, the old revolutionary to the end. But if there is, I can imagine my old comrade Gu laughing down at me when I say, with all honesty, that everything's going to be all right. <laughs>